Welcome back to Coffee and Conversation. I have the coffee, and that's the only black cat we have right now, because Audie is outside playing in the rain. He begged. I was pretty sure he wouldn't leave the porch knowing it was raining out, but he did, and he went over to Jane's house. So we'll see. Most of the time he goes over to Jane's house and she just takes him in and cuddles him and whatever else he wants. And then he'll wander back when he's had enough, uh, which is usually a long time because he loves Jane. But for the moment, he is entertaining himself outside in the rainy world. He certainly will be back. So before we get started, scarf. Uh, this, of course, is yellow for Catherine. You can see the bits of yellow. It's not like a buttercup yellow, like most of them are. It's more of a golden yellow, but hey, you know, I'm, I'm getting desperate. And I wanted to show you this because this isn't really tying a scarf. This is simply a scarf that is draped over my neck and it's crossed and it's tucked into my sweater. This is my I don't need to wear a blouse scarf. So, just so you know, I'm, I'm putting my money where my mouth is here. I am in nothing but my undershirt. There is, well, undershirts, plural. There is no blouse, just my undershirts. And I think a bra strap is showing. But yes, you can actually wear a scarf instead of a blouse. If you're going to do that, my suggestion would be something like this. And this one is about 12, 14 inches wide and probably a good six feet long. Um, oh yeah, I get it up here and you can really start to see the yellow. So yes, you can use this instead of a blouse. You can use it with a blouse. You can tuck it into a jacket or do what I did, tuck it into a sweater etc, etc. But as you can see, I am not wearing a, a real shirt underneath this. And I'm not feeling particularly naked either. So yes, one more way to wear a scarf. All right, when we come back, we are going to get into the topic of this video, which hopefully will be a little more lighthearted than the last one. Okay, so my sweater is back. Yes, obviously there was a reason I wore the sweater in the first place. I wouldn't go so far as to say it's cold. It's really not. It's it's pretty mild. But because it's raining, it, it is damp and has a sort of chilly feeling in the air. But that's not what we're going to talk about. Uh, we are going to talk about perfume. So why? because I wanted to share with you how I buy perfume. Now, I love perfume. I am not one of those people who has a signature scent. I like all kinds of perfumes. Although I will say, and I do have to throw this out, especially for those of you who may be sighted and may be in contact with a lot of blind people. When I was actively advocating for the blind community, I did have a signature scent. We all did, because it's kind of rude not to. Many people, if a sighted person walks into a room, they immediately see everybody that's there. If a blind person walks into a room, wearing a certain perfume consistently levels the playing field for them. They walk into the room, they get a whiff of your perfume, they know who's there. So yes, I used to, but not any longer. Uh, so now I am just, I don't even want to say perfume shopping. I get my perfumes. Here, let me show you. Yes, bunches of perfume samples. And I just dropped two of them on the floor. So excuse me a moment while I retrieve them. 
Okay, got my spilled samples and I'm back. Um, I get these from a company called Fragrance Net. And these are perfume samples, which they sell for uh, anywhere from, well, this is like between a uh, dollar and dollar seventy five, I think is the least expensive. And I believe the most expensive was seven dollars. Now, you're probably thinking to yourself, why would you do that? These are perfume samples. They're, they give them away at department stores. Well, yes, but you don't always get all the samples you want at a department store. And it can be very difficult to do things like this. Um, this is Versace Pour Femme. And Versace is no longer uh, marketing this. I don't know if, if it's a question of they're not making it. I don't know if you find this in some special, I don't know, Versace only shop. Uh, honestly, I have no idea what's happened to it, but I know that uh, a regular online search is simply not turning this up. So here we go. Little perfume sample. So I got seven of these. And the total cost was $14.63 for all seven. The reason why is because I can't get it in a bottle. And if I want it in a bottle, this is how I'm going to buy it. And I can get as much or as little as I want. Now, a whole big three or four ounce bottle of this is probably going to be ghastly expensive. And it's probably going to be a lot more perfume than I'm going to be able to, to get proper use of. But the little sample bottles, oh yeah. I mean, I can certainly, oh, and I should say, let me get that open again. It's a struggle to open it. Yes, so like an idiot, I closed it. What was I thinking? A little bottle like this, and here we go. And as you can see, a nice percentage of that is the top, so... We just, there we go. That is at least four or five wearings, you know, uh, and I'm not, I'm not frugal with my perfume. When I put it on, I just splash it all over me. And this is four or five wearings. So uh, when you look at something like this and say that's about $2 worth of perfume, it is a designer brand. Oh, and it's great. And I got this the last time I bought perfume samples, which is why I went looking for it again to get a large bottle. Uh, it's awfully hard to beat the price on something like this, especially when you consider that I can easily wear that particular perfume two or three times a week for, like, I don't know, six or eight months before I run out of those sample bottles. Life is good. But I started buying sample bottles of perfume when I started to think maybe the perfume I had been wearing for many, many years was starting to smell like Shalimar. And for those of you who are not familiar with what I mean by this, Shalimar was a very, very popular perfume in my grandmother's generation. And all the little old ladies, when I was a teenager, you sniffed them, they smelled like Shalimar. So I don't want to smell like Shalimar, not literally, but figuratively. And I was afraid that, that some of the perfumes that I had gotten from years past that I really liked were starting to become, you know, the new Shalimar. So I was looking for something interesting. Uh, something younger. Oh, by the way, um, Wonderstruck by Taylor Swift. I love that. So, yes, would I ever go into a department store and buy a Taylor Swift perfume? Of course not. <laughs> Wouldn't even occur to me. But when I was putting together a list of little sample products, I thought to myself, well, let me just throw it in and try it. And 
that's what happens when I buy these samples. I have an opportunity to try things I would never ordinarily try. And if I really like it, I can go out and buy a bottle. Um, pleats, please, Isimiyaki. That's another one I found, which I love, by the way, and I do go out and buy bottles of that. I won't be able to much longer because I don't think that anybody is currently stocking that. I think it's sort of faded out. But yeah, I loved it. That was great. So I took that information, went out and got a bottle. Now, the problem with doing this by going into a department store, and this is what I had to do when I was younger, in the pre-internet days, I'd have to go to a department store and the perfumes that I would have available to me would depend, one, on the department store, whose perfumes they carried, two, are the sales personnel on commission? If they are, it's very likely they will have some very nice fragrances that they just won't show me because they're not getting enough commission on those. Uh, I, as a consumer, uh, was very gate-kept in my choices. I would be steered to one brand over another, and I would end up with all kinds of stuff that maybe I thought it smelled nice in the store when I tried it on, when it was mingling with all sorts of other little ambient fragrances from all the people who had been at that particular perfume counter, not to mention the perfume the sales clerk might be wearing. And then I get it home and it's like, whoa, this doesn't smell the same. So I love buying perfume online. However, because I have no interest in paying three or $400 for a bottle of perfume that I don't like, I'm not even sure I want to pay that much for a perfume I do like, but I don't want to do that, I, and this is the easiest way. So we've got a whole bunch here, and before I start sharing with you what I got, the company I got it from, like I say, Fragrance Net, and this is not a paid promotion or anything like that. Uh, this is just, these are the people who have made my perfume buying easy for me. They have given me some samples. I bought all these and they tucked three more in. So isn't that nice? This is Ibiza. And I have not even sniffed it yet. By the way, I'm not going to go through that, sniff the perfume, tell you what it smells like. Because what a perfume smells like on me is not going to be what it smells like on you. I'm just going to give you a bit of a an overview of what I am paying for these so that if you want to check it out for yourself, you can go ahead and do it because this is so personal. Your perfume might smell fantastic on you, but it might smell like crap on me. You really have to try it on yourself. But this is a nice little sample. I don't know. It'd be so what is this? It smells like Spain, I guess. I don't know. This is another one called Exceptional. I have no idea who made this. This one is uh, Hotevi. Uh, and that's who uh, puts the Abita out. But this one. All right. Come on, you all recognize it. Now, you know I love Dolly Parton. Um, I, I like her music but I love who Dolly is. And they sent me Dolly Parton perfume. So I don't have, to, I'm gonna love this. Oh, here, by the way, we're not talking about a very rinky dink little sample. Look at this side. Okay, here, let me just open this. I'm gonna take it out. Now remember the other one? Now we've got this one and it has uh, an atomizer dispenser. I like those. But uh, this, all right, fine. I know. I said I wasn't going to do this. It smells great. This smells what, 
what I imagine Dolly smells like. So, yes. All right, I said I wasn't going to do it. Now that I've done it, I can't do any more because it will all be affected by the fact that I've got Dolly. Oh, that is nice. So, they gave me that one for free. It was just a free gift for my order. Oh, it's great. So, uh, this is smart of them because already we know I'm going to go out and find a bottle of this and buy it. Oh, yes, I am. But it just makes sense to do it this way. Um, I find that many of these I uh, hear. Yves Saint Laurent. And this is Libra. And let me just pull up. Um, I have an entire printout of everything I bought along with the prices. So this one was $4.89. And this too is a fairly substantial. Um, it's a substantial bottle, but here's the perfume level. It's not a lot of perfume. However, go price this perfume out. The reason I threw this into my little sample purchase bag was because I saw how expensive it was, thought about buying it and said, absolutely not. I will not take a chance on a perfume that expensive without trying it out first because, you know, like I say, I don't really want to spend that kind of money on on perfume if I don't know for a fact that I like it. Let me pull. All right, I'm digging around in here. I got stuff all over the place. Let's see if I can find that. Um, I wanted to show you the most expensive of the purchases, and this was seven dollars. So, um, this is Versace. Remember, I bought seven bottles of the Versace Pour Femme, and that was simply because I, I tried it. I liked it. I knew I liked it. And this one, let's see how the heck I'm going to get this open. Ah, here we go. Um, I'm not going to be able to read it off here. I can certainly read it off my printout, though. Um... Eros, Versace Eros. And this one was $7 for a little sample. However, I have quite a little fondness for this because I had a friend who liked to pose and display her 17, 18 inch ball jointed dolls. Um, Ellen Wilde, Evangeline Gastly, that sort of thing, large dolls. And I would get these and send them to her so that she could use them as props in her doll displays. And they are just terrific. But they are adorable. And I do have a, a collection, a very small collection, maybe five or six bottles like this on my dresser just because who can resist a tiny little bottle? So the fact is, yeah, I'm paying a lot for this sample, but I'm definitely getting a gorgeous little bottle along for the ride. So that is another thing you can do with samples that you really can't do if you're going into a department store to get the fancy little bottles. The giveaways from the department store are things like the, oh, Tiffany. This was another one that was ghastly expensive. Um, yeah, you will get something like this. And this also has that atomizer lid. Let me see what I paid for this because this was um, in a bottle, uh, an, ex an exceptionally expensive perfume, uh, $6. So given the fact that my sample started a dollar and change, yeah, for a sample, this is pricey, but Tiffany, what can you say? And if it turns out that I do like this, rather than go out and get a full-size bottle of 
Tiffany perfume, which I'm sure is in the thousands. I haven't priced it, but best guess, oh yeah, we're talking, you know, like mortgage payment level. I will simply go out and get a few more sample bottles. And with three or four bottles like that, I will have enough of this perfume to last me for a year because I don't wear it every day because I'm going to start wearing this dolly. Oh, this is nice. So, yes, I will not be wearing that every day, but a few sample bottles will absolutely keep me in perfume for a year. This one. Oh, Hermes. Yeah, wow. So, you got to know that's going to be expensive. Let's look this up. Uh Okay, two seventy nine. dollars so it looks like I was quite wrong about this one. Again, it's a nice size bottle with an atomizer top, and this is Terre de May, Terre de Mays. so, um, which is basically the land of Hermes. Not sure what that means, but that's what it says. And... Something like that, that is not an everyday perfume. That's not the one you wear to the store. So, yeah, a sample bottle. That one, boy, for two, what is it, two seventy nine? I said. This one, Miss Dior. Let's see what this one cost. Um, $5.59. So this was one of the more expensive ones, but it is very nice. Even the sample bottle is very nice. Little white with gold and the little atomizer. Um, yeah. So with any luck at all, I will have convinced you that this is the way to go. Oh, uh, let me just pull that up again and tell you how much I spent in total because it will be on that list somewhere. Where's the total? Down at the bottom. $64.11. And remember, I got seven samples of one kind of perfume that I bought in lieu of a bottle of that perfume that would have cost me a lot more than 65 bucks. So, yes. Um, what else do I have that's particularly interesting? Oh, Dolce & Gabbana. Let's see what this is. Uh -huh. Yes, a lovely little red and black bottle. This is, uh, well, let's see if we can figure this out. I'm going to read it off the list because I can't read it off the bottle. Um, okay, first of all, the cost was a dollar seventy four, and this is Dul Dulce Rose. Uh, we've got one from Kenzo in here. Let's take a look at that too. Um, oh, plus we've got another one of these that's called Dulce Lily, and the Dulce Lily was two twenty three, and the Kenzo is one thirty nine. So let's see if we can find those. Go on a quest here. Um, this is the Dolce Lily, and the other one was very nice. Nice red and black bottle. Let's see what we've got here. Ah, pink and black. Okay. And uh, a Dolce & Gabbana, so this is a major name. And let's see if we can find the... Oh, I'll show you this one, too. It's got a very pretty package. Kenzo. And again, good-sized bottle with the atomizer top. And that was pocket change. And this is a major designer. I, I have one of their scarves. Um... And I love it. And the scarf was pretty expensive. Very beautiful. So, yeah.
This one is called Lolita Land. I have no idea what that's all about. Again, nice sample, atomizer spray. I think the reason I popped this in is because I probably liked the packaging. Uh, and sometimes it's nothing more for me than I think the packaging is cute. I'll give it a try. Or, like I say, with the Taylor Swift, uh, just, oh, Taylor Swift, why not? Simply because I kind of expected it was going to smell very young, very much like bubblegum or lollipops or whatever. But it turns out it was great, and I really do love it. And this is, to be honest, this is about half of what I usually buy when I go off shopping for these little perfume samples, mostly because of the, the seven bottles of the same fragrance. But still, you know, I usually come back with quite a bit more than that, but they give me samples and I am very much a fan of shopping for perfume this way because Again, let me show you this. And mind you, some of them I've just taken out and set aside. For most of us, that's probably enough perfume to last for an entire year. And it's not just drugstore perfume, although I'll say a word about that in a moment. It's not just drugstore perfume. It's designer fragrances. It's name brands. You know, you walk into the office with this sense, oh, Dolce & Gabbana. You know, and you can get all snooty on everybody. It's enough to last a year for 65 bucks. By anybody's estimation, this is a fabulous deal. But when you throw in the incredible variety you get and you get to choose, I would say this is just too good to pass up. Now, drugstore perfume. I pulled this out when I was going through the perfumes because I have to pack this up and send this to Colleen because, uh, as some of you who followed the comments may know, Colleen is a Bill Blass fan. Now, Bill Blass was a major designer. He, he really hit it big in the 70s and 80s, so he's my generation. And this is one of his perfumes. It's called Hot. These days, I don't know what this originally retailed for, but these days I can get this for under $20. And I mean, look at the size of the bottle. Under $20, I consider it like drugstore perfume in that price range that you would expect to pay for some no-name fragrance you would get at a drugstore. This, despite the fact that it is turt, cheap is the one perfume that I can guarantee will get noticed. I have had people stop me on the street. Strangers just stop me on the street and say, I love your perfume. What is it? And more than once. And it's this every time I go out there in Chanel number no. five and nobody even looks twice. Bill Blast drugstore perfume. And everybody's like, oh, I love that. Where can I get some? It's like, well, you know, not sure where you can get it anymore. But I, whenever I find it, I grab a couple of bottles because, like I say, it's the one that will turn heads. So cost is not necessarily a factor. But it is a designer perfume, Bill Blast, even though... He's not, you know, Givenchy or Saint Laurent. He's still a name that is very well recognized in the U.S. And that is a nice perfume. And that is why I'm sending it to Colleen. Because like I say, this is the head-turning perfume. So, there you go. All right. That is what I have for you today. And I thought it would be a nice change of pace from yesterday when we got into something very very mm, unsettling. And this is just fun. This is how I buy my perfume. And I am going to put the, um, the name of the company in the video notes. Again, not sponsored, not even close, because I don't do advertising or sponsorships. 
I am not for sale. So, oh, by the way, you are not for sale because I have people approaching me because they want to sell you stuff. It's like, no, I mean, don't treat me like a pimp. So the fact is, no, it's just that this is a really, really good place to get perfume in a really interesting and convenient way that virtually guarantees you're not going to have waste. You're going to get what you want. You're going to be able to try all kinds of fragrances and you're going to be able to switch them out one day to the next and never smell the same way twice. So, by the way, if you're dealing with the blind, don't do that. That blind people get very testy when you do that sort of thing to them. If you're dealing with the blind, find a perfume and stick with it. So, that's what I have for you today. We are going to take a look at a slideshow on the way out. Adi has come back. He is now sitting on the porch railing. And I'm sure he's just waiting for me to open the door so he can tell me how angry he is that I let him go out and get wet. But we'll cross that bridge when we come to it. Meanwhile, have a terrific day.